Usually, I don't get that excited when manufacturers tell me about their new coupe crossovers, because generally that's not my kind of thing. Also, complicated marketing just does my head in. But this I'm interested in, because this is Nissan's new pure electric Aria. Reasons to be cheerful? Well, Nissan is a company that's very good at doing lots of different things. It brought us the Leaf and had an EV strategy pretty much before anybody else. It produces the Qashqai, which is the kind of boring but effective family car that dominates the world. And it also produces the Nissan GTR, one of my personal favorite sports cars ever because it's completely nuts. Now, this car is supposed to be a bit of a mashup of all three. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but you do have my attention. First of all, I think it actually looks just about as good as a coupe crossover possibly can, or whatever that kind of angular ovoid actually is. It looks quite technical and complicated, but once you start picking at it, it's actually quite simple. It's got these really slim LED headlights that sit in the front here that kind of disappear when they're not in use. And then there's this big black panel that leaves you in no doubt that this is an electric vehicle. These little patterns in here, by the way, are called Kumiko. And I also quite like the fact that it's got this illuminated Nissan badge that's bracketed by these kind of shiny fangs. Another thing I really like, and this is a bit weird, but it's got a sloping roof line that takes out some of the visual bulk of the car. And then there's a feature line that runs right from the front of it and gallops all the way down through the doors to the rear of the car where it then sweeps into a big light bar at the back. This is a car that should be a bit fat and ugly and actually it's not. Nissan says that the Aria embodies timeless Japanese futurism and you can kind of see where they're going with it. Although that does sound like a conversation I'd pretty much avoid in any pub. The thing is, this is a car that's Japanese and stylish and interesting without being so wacky that you'd be embarrassed to be seen in it. I even like the aerodynamic bladed wheels. And usually I am very, very picky when it comes to rims. It will come in five different flavors in the UK and it goes a little something like this. There are two battery versions available at 63 or 87 kilowatt hours. The basic car has a 63 kilowatt hour battery, 217 brake horsepower of power, and two wheel drive, and should manage around 223 miles of range on the WLTP cycle. Oh, and it gets to 62 miles an hour in seven and a half seconds. The next one is the long range, a bigger 87 kilowatt hour battery, but still only two wheel drive. That's got 242 brake horsepower and a similar 0 to 62 time as the base, but should get you up to 310 miles on a charge. Then there's the all wheel drive cars, the two motor system, which Nissan calls E-Force, one with the smaller battery and two with the bigger pack. The smaller battery manages 279 brake horsepower, zero to 62 in 5.9 and 211 miles of range, and the larger one, 306 brake horsepower and a range of 285 miles WLTP with zero to 62 in 5.7. You got all that? Good. Then there's the top of the tree, the performance. Now that comes with the bigger pack and E-Force all-wheel drive, but also a not inconsequential 394 brake horsepower and 248 miles of range. That's the one to scare the kids with because it gets from rest to 62 miles an hour in 5.1 seconds. Pointless, yes, but amusing. It should handle as well. The location of the battery pack, which is right down here, means that the Aria has perfect 50-50 weight distribution and apparently a lower center of gravity than a Nissan Leaf hatchback. Yeah, that surprised me as well. But perhaps my favorite bit of the car is actually in there. Come with me. Oh. Now this, this I like because the Aria's interior is really quite lovely. It's, uh, for a start, it's not got some sort of massive widescreen tablet just stapled to the dash. Instead, it's got two 12.3 inch touchscreens that they call the monolith and they stretch right across here. And you can basically make these show whatever kind of information you want. Also, it's got a head up display in front for all the driving information. And then it's got nice little things like these haptic buttons that are kind of inset into the dash and center console and they appear when you switch the car on. It's like magic. <gasps> huh. 
Generally though, I find it all quite elegant and comfortable and calm. I really quite like it. Also, a thing that I actually quite like is it's got two glove boxes, which is really good for hiding things. Some neat touches. Well, on some models, you actually get a flip out picnic table for the passenger side, which would be really useful. And this center console is actually electric. So if you press this button, because the area has no sort of big transmission hump in the middle, you can slide it back. And this feels actually quite a lot more spacious. It's really quite groovy. It's also got a repeat of all these nice little patterns everywhere down here and on the doors but it's not kind of intense detail, it's very relaxed. And there's this light bar that wraps around down the doors and all the way around the dash like a big belt line that changes colour according to the drive mode you're in, which is accessed from here. Now, I'm not sure whether that's genius or a bit too 1990s nightclub for my taste, but it is interesting. And as for the rest, well, the boot is big enough and the back seats are pretty spacious too. It's not weird for weird's sake, and it's also pretty intuitive. It's actually all very calming. And as you might expect, there's plenty of driver assist tech and connectivity to keep you from stressing out. Nissan's ProPilot takes some of the nail biting out of commutes, and there's Amazon Alexa Auto to shout at if you want something, as well as intelligent route planners, control apps and the like. All areas will charge up to 130 kilowatts DC, with charging times dependent on where you plug it in and which battery you have, obviously. And yes, they all come with Nissan's e-pedal, the one-pedal braking system that's a bit keen when you first try it, but soon becomes fairly addictive. There's no word on pricing officially yet, but if you dig around in the press material, it kind of suggests that those people who are in the market for a Leaf E Plus might well be trading up into an area. So I reckon somewhere between 36 to 37,000 pounds to just just under 50 grand might well be where this car is priced. Overall though, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. I think the performance version might be a bit of glorious overkill, and I'd probably have the car that was a little less fast, but had a bit more range for a little bit less money. But generally, I think it's pretty good. Also, the things that sell the Aria for me are the really rather nice interior, and the fact that it's styled distinctively without being too wacky. If Nissan can price this keenly, then I think it might be a contender. What do you think to Nissan's new Aria? Hit or miss? Are you keen on timeless Japanese futurism? Well, I'll tell you what, let us know in the comments below and please do log on to electrifying.com for all your electric car needs, because that's how we earn money.